from Kota Kinabalu in Sabah, Malaysian Borneo. Yeah, we are outside the Sabah Tourism Board building today. It's a historic building here in downtown Kota Kinabalu. And we're about to go on a walking tour. It's Thursday morning at almost nine o'clock. Yeah, Sabah Tourism Board offers free walking tour three times a week. And we are excited to join them today. Yeah, so we're gonna see some of the sites in and around downtown Kota Kinabalu today. Sun start getting pretty hot yeah. and hopefully uh, you know, I'm not gonna get sunburned again, but Michael, I think, coat himself with I did. sunscreen. I coated myself with white guy sauce. <laughs> All right, let's get it started. We are starting off our free walking tour in the Sabah Tourism Board building, which is the oldest building here. And this is one of the three buildings that actually survived the Second World War. And if you've been here before, you have to notice that this is also where the zero kilometers Kota Kinabalu mark. That means this is the center of the city itself. Finally starting the actual walking part of the tour. Get working on my tan. <laughs> and working on my sweat, literally. <laughs> they have other supermarkets but limited. But here you've got so many choice. Tonghing seems to be the first grocery store here in Kota Kinabalu from the 50s. We are learning all the history, all the important stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Pillars of Saba in downtown Kota Kinabalu. This used to be the old land and survey building and it was destroyed by fire back in the 80s or 90s, I can't quite remember. And they originally painted all these pillars with prominent people that lived in the area. Uh, and that was called Pillars of Saba 1. And then a few years ago, they actually decided to repaint them and they did it with wildlife. So there's 30 pillars here with 30 pictures of wildlife painted on them that are endemic to the region and that are endangered. So that's the Pillars of Saba. It's kept as an art installation instead of the new building going up. So it's not even 10 o'clock yet. I'm already sweating um, and people are looking for some shade. So therefore, Hiding under the, one of the pillars here. <laughs> Hiding from the sun. Yeah, there's a nice breeze right here and I'm standing in the shade, so it's kind of cool. So this is, they call it the Gaya Street. Gaya Street, it's very famous. Every Sunday there's a Gaya Street market. From this point until the end is closed for the public. Kota Kinabalu is a very new city, but simply because pretty much the whole town, which was built in the 1800s, burnt down during the Second World War. So, for example, the oldest hotel in the city is the Jesselson Hotel, which was built in 1954. Relatively very new. But there are three different buildings that were actually survived the Second World War. The Sabah Tourism Board, the Pillars of Sabah, which was sadly burned down in the 80s, and one other building that I completely forgot. Now we're going to walk to the observatory tower. <laughs> Everybody can walk? <laughs> yes. yes. Where are we going? Up to the observatory, up 300 and something stairs, which I did the other day, and I was soaking wet by the time I got up. Michael's done it, so he decided to stay put in the bottom. So I'm gonna hike up with the rest of the group. Oh, <laughs> The slipper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, lost a shoe. Could be bad. I don't, okay. I don't 
Yep, it's confirmed that I sweat a lot, unfortunately, especially in the heat like this. Although, if you stay in the shade, it's not too bad. Just in case it wasn't clear, we're going up to the uh, top of the signal hill where basically the panoramic platform to overlook Kota Kinabalu. Now I'm just suffering. <laughs> 300 steps up to the top of the hill. <sighs> Still need to walk up to the platform. Yay! We made it. This is the observatory tower, that is the highest point on this, facing the sea. So you can see the bird eye view of the city actually. Uh, let's talk about the Gaia Island. This is the Tunku Abdurrahman Park. You can see uh, one, two, three islands now here. Uh -huh. one is This area is called the uh, Australia place because used to be a lot of Australians camping out in this area so locals still call it Australian place. Right, going back down. At least going downhill is not as bad as going up. We are back. How was it? Good. Now we are in the backpacking area of Kota Kinabalu and this is where the Australian place is from above that I mentioned earlier. Don't you love trivia? So there's a mural here right behind me and this is one of the uh, waterfalls you can find in the basin in the middle of Borneo. And there's like a lot of wildlife here and we have to guess one animal that is not belong to Sabah. And my uncle got it. It's the peacock. And it's a female peacock. What do I win? Ice cream. <laughs> On our way to our next destination, which is the Atkinson Clock Tower. Atkinson Clock Tower, actually built in 1905. All right, I mentioned earlier that there were three buildings that survived the Second World War bombing here in Kotokinabalu. And the third one happens to be the Atkinson Clock Tower here. And there's a controversy of trying to move it away because this area could be developed for another shopping mall but locals completely against it. Hopefully it's stay put here because we do like it here. They were doing some construction and there was a discussion about moving it. No, there's a, there's a space there next to it. Yeah. They demolished the building. They want to make a down to City Hall, we just learned that they have free bicycles here. Uh, if you want a bike, you just have to come down, you just get it right over here. All you need is your passport, they'll take your passport, a photocopy of it, and they'll give you a bike. They used to actually charge 100 ringgit as a deposit and give it back, but they found that people are so honest that they decided to stop charging it. So if you want a bike just to go around the city, something we didn't know till today, you can get one over here. It's the British, and on the right hand side, they put another plaque, is the confrontation of Borneo. A small city park, considered to the size of the uh, city itself, but we get the war memorial, which is basically the Second World War and also some independence war. Behind me right now is a street that they lovingly call Durian Street. It's a place we can come at night and there's lots of food stalls here. And there's definitely durian because you can smell it, even in the daytime. Cigarette, you roll it, put it inside, then you roll it, then it becomes a cigarette. And we made it to our favorite place, which is the local market. And this is a wet market where you can find a lot of fresh produce, meat, and etc. And then we are now hunting for local fruit that some of them are endemic to Borneo. So hopefully we'll find some of them. Dragon fruit. This is the custard apple, locally planted. But inside is white. There's so many seeds inside. Okay. So you just peel it off and you eat, take out the seeds. You like learn something, right? I do like that. 
but I just discovered that you can fry the seeds up and make them taste like peanuts. We threw them all away. Okay, come. It's not disappointing. You find a lot of different fruits here, and of course, a lot of them I'm familiar with, we're familiar with, but some of them are endemic to Borneo. I've never heard or seen before. Langsat and Tarap, durian, it's all here. And imagine the smell. Very, very nice. Langsat. Remove the cover of the skin of the uh, fruit, the seeds. You grate it, mix with it, with chili, mm -hmm. and, salt, and they call it uh, wild mango Borneo. Wild mango as a pickle. When off season, people need to make a stripe like this, slice it, okay. then remove the skin, then you eat it. First time indoor in, <laughs> in the morning, it feels good just to escape from the heat a little bit. We are in a gift shop called uh, Kodaiku. And I've taken the opportunity to sit down and just enjoy the air conditioning for a while. Did we mention that this place is air conditioned? Thank you, air conditioning. And right now he's just standing under the air conditioning. <laughs> Best spot ever because it's drying off my back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a musical, but I don't, I'm not that good. I can just blow on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, and we just concluded our free walking tour in this handicraft market. Yeah, so you need to go down to the Saba Tourism Office or look online and find out when they do their tours. They do it three times a week at 9 o'clock in the morning. For us, we've been to most of these places already because we've already been here for a week. But if you're brand new here, I highly recommend it because it'll give you a really good introduction to the city and get your bearings. Now it's oh, what, almost noon and as you can see, I was just sweating to death. So we're going to, I guess, close up and cool off somewhere else. But, see, I'm not sweating at all. I'm totally fine. And uh, he is soaking wet. Yeah. Southeast Asian guy can't handle the heat. No, that's why I escaped to the United States, by the way. <laughs> All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, we had a great time making it. If you want to subscribe to our channel and follow our around the world journeys, press that subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications every time we post something new, hit the bell. Thanks for watching. Thank Terima kasih. Terima kasih from Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia. White chili. This is the onion with the leaves. Any I can't tap any bamboo. Ah, not French fries. No, no. <laughs> <laughs>